hello friends, welcome back. It's been a while since I've done a sit down video, but let's bring it back to the roots to where this channel started in the first place. I've been at Booth for about six months now, so there's quite a bit of accumulated MBA experience that I feel like I could share some insights as to what I wish I knew before, what I like about it now, what I don't like about it, um, just the curriculum in general and the whole experience. So let's talk about it. First of all, I've done a few coffee chats over the last few weeks and people have had some common questions um, during those chats, so I thought I should just share them on my YouTube. So first question is why an MBA? Especially I'm leaning towards the younger end of the MBA spectrum. Um, the average age here is roughly around 28 and I turned 25 over the summer. So why an MBA? Uh, before this, I was a tech risk consultant at EY. I had a background in accounting information systems. And I just realized that I kind of wanted to pivot into something more creative in the business fields. So as an international student, it was much harder to pivot due to visa reasons. And I've always wanted to do an MBA as well, knowing that I, I think growing up when my dad mentioned it, I just always wanted to do an MBA. So it's always been in the back of the mind. And then COVID happened, right? So it was kind of hard to pivot out of existing fields with the, with the job market. And I thought it was just perfect time for me to pursue an MBA. Hence, I did that. And during my MBA, I explored a bunch of different career paths. And during my coffee chats with other professionals, I found out about this field, this role called a PMM, Product Marketing Management. And I think it's, so far, the role that I'm very interested in because it combines a lot of the business strategy parts, including with the creative sides of like marketing, uh, but also leverages data. So it's like a perfect overlap of what I think I would be interested in, which is what I'll be doing this summer. So this is what I can do my MBA for to pivot into other fields. And I'm going to be doing so this summer. I'll be joining Adobe. Um, in the Bay Area for their PMM role specifically in Premiere Pro. So that is very exciting. That's kind of why I wanted to do my MBA. Um, yeah. All right, second question, the Booth curriculum. Let's talk about that. Booth is known for its flexibility in the curriculum of not having required foundations, etc. And to a certain extent, that's true. Um, it's pretty flexible in terms of how you wanna schedule your courses, though there are caveats in terms of prerequisites, the bidding process. I will get into the bidding process in a little bit. Um, but generally, yeah, it's, it's quite flexible in terms of concentration and what you want, want to take. I can't speak for other schools and other curriculums, but I might have a sit down chat soon with someone from Kellogg. So, so we'll talk about that later. But in terms of Booth, there's three main foundations that you sort of have to take, which is uh, financial accounting, uh, microeconomics and business stats. But if you had like background before Booth, whether in undergrad or in your job, um, like me, I was a CPA, so I was able to weigh the accounting requirement. Um, for stats, I believe there's this class called Big Data that can also substitute for it. So it's just really make it your own kind of thing. And so far, I've really enjoyed the classes. A few favorites so far, um, Competitive Strategy with Thomas Bullman was so good. He's just such an engaging professor and he does occasionally cold call, but it just keeps you engaged. And he's just a great lecturer in general. I learned a lot from it. Marketing Strategy taught by both uh, Shapiro. I didn't take his class. I took Dearvorst's class, Berkeley Dearvorst. He's a great professor, learned a lot. And for our final project, we had to do a product extension of an existing brand. So we had to find an existing brand and create something that wasn't there and talk about that product positioning, how we're gonna launch it, distribution, pricing, etc. That was very fun as well. And last quarter, I also took Entrepreneurial Discovery, which in my last video, Ruth, you talked about, uh, where we got to hear from uh, Mark Tebby. He was an entrepreneur and now he's lecturing. He brings in a bunch of guest speakers to talk about their entrepreneurial successes. Sorry, let me rephrase that. Their entrepreneurial successes. And it's just, uh, you, you do learn quite a bit about that. And it's like a good first step into the NBC New Venture Challenge, which I don't intend to do next this year, but next year maybe. This quarter I'm taking, what am I taking? Oh, consumer behavior, um, reputation regulation and communications, basically how media influences business and business stats. Not the most fun class, but I do like consumer behavior is talking about like uh, consumer psychology, how people behave when they purchase things and how they think. Um, so I'm very much leaning into the marketing concentration, but that's sort of the booth curriculum a little bit. Next question, favorite classes. Oh, I already talked about that, but let's talk about the bidding process. So at booth, you don't just register for classes 
like I did in undergrad. So in undergrad, I went to University of Washington and what we did was first comes first serve. So the system would basically shut down if you're not like spam pressing at exactly on the dot whenever the system launched. For Booth, we're actually bidding for it. So it, you start off having bid points. So in your first quarter, you automatically get I forgot how many bid points you get. But anyway, you get bid points and you basically auction for classes, you, you bid for them. And whatever is the lowest price that gets you into the class, you get refunded the excess that you bid. So for example, if a class goes for 500 bid points, which you, you wouldn't know in the first place because it's a, everybody bids differently. Um, and let's say you bid a thousand points and the class goes for 500, then you get 500 refunded. Does that make sense? There is a course bidding history so you can kind of see how much it went for in the last few quarters. And it could range from zero points or sometimes one point to 15,000 points. So it really depends on the class and you gotta kind of manage your wallet a little bit for the bid points. Some people hate it, some people love, okay, I don't know if anybody loves it, but some people hate it, some people are neutral about it. I am neutral about it, I don't, I don't hate it at all. I think it definitely has its qualms for sure. It does take a while for you to get your schedule set because there are many different phases. There's phase one of bidding, phase two, phase three, where it's like you can only drop and phase four is ad hoc, add and drop, I don't know, there's a lot of rules in this play, which if you like that sort of thing, a lot of us do because we're very quant and board game, quantitative, whatever. You know what I'm trying to say. I will say my one qualm with it is that we don't really get to see a two year course curriculum. So you're not always sure what's gonna be offered next quarter um, in advance. So it makes it hard to plan a little bit. Um, and the professor list, sometimes, maybe there's a resource out there, but it sometimes changes. And I just wish that I could sort of plan the two years out so I know what I'm getting myself into. Um, but alas, that's not an option. At least not that I'm aware of. Next question. By the way, if you guys have any more questions, just leave them in the comments. I'm happy to answer them or I'm happy to interview other boothies for it because people are just so friendly about it. We like to share about our experiences just to make help you make a better and more informed decision about you know which school to choose, which school you should be thinking about applying, etc. Okay. Next question, clubs, what's fun at Booth? I know Booth has a reputation for being very nerdy, etc. but honestly, I haven't really felt that. People are super smart, but at the same time, people really know how to have fun. There's a lot of really cool clubs out here. And by, besides clubs, there's a lot of like social events, whether self-organized or through, through um, bigger clubs like Booth Basketball Club, which I got to be on the Bulls court for right before Bulls game. So annually, we do this thing called running with the bulls. We compete with Northwestern Kellogg because we're in the same state, you know, so there's a healthy rivalry here. We compete with them in a lot of different factors. Uh, we've got sports, so soccer, basketball, we've got music, which I'll get into later, but annually we compete with them in basketball and we do it on the United Center floor it, right before a bulls game. So this year we played right before the bulls went up against Sacramento Kings. So red and purple, also Booth and Kellogg, red and purple. I don't know if that was intentional, but I'm gonna have to ask the co-chairs about that. So we play like a 15 minute game beforehand on the Bulls court and I got to be the camera person on it because I was injured. So it's just super cool to have that opportunity. Like what do you, what chance do you get to say that you stepped on the court or even shot a shot in the NBA basket? Like, you know. Another club that I'm in is Booth Volleyball, which we play uh, weekly either in U Chicago um, intramural leagues against other grad schools or we play in Chicago leagues. So it just really depends. And I think in the spring there's beach volleyball coming up and we do have a beach volleyball tournament against Kellogg. Another club that I'm in, which probably is one of my favorites, is Audio Booth. So Audio Booth is bands, basically. We form bands and we have battle of the bands annually and whatever band advances, we get to compete with Kellogg. We do it differently. I think, I believe Kellogg has two bands that you in, you audition into in the start of the year, um, kind of like Pitch Perfect Glee style. But at Booth, we form our own band. So we have multiple, like this year we have six and we have Booth battle the bands first, two bands then move forward to go against Kellogg. So it's just different processes. They're all really fun and it's a great environment to be in. I love jamming with my bandmates. We actually have Booth Battle coming up in a week. By the time you see this video, it's probably coming up in two days or something like that. It's like living out the musician dream that I never really get to have. It, it, it's just super cool and people are so talented. It's so nice to see the different side quests that people have. And also there's cultural clubs like 
Taiwanese student club that I'm in. I'm also a co-chair of coming up next year. Uh, Sub G, South Asian business group. They're super cool. We had this Diwali cruise last year, last quarter. And I don't know, I want to say like 400 people showed up at Navy Pier. We went on this cruise where it was catered, danced our feet off. <laughs> By the end of the night, I couldn't walk in my heels, so people had to <laughs> piggyback carry me to the Uber because I couldn't walk. But it's just so fun to, pe to see people celebrate each other's cultures. Um, everybody dressed up in like authentic Indian clothing. It's just what a great experience, what a welcoming culture, and I really appreciate that. Um, there are also professional clubs, obviously. The management consulting groups, the booth technology groups, the investment banking group, uh, investment management group, marketing group. Uh, corporate management group, I don't know, there's so many. And if you go check out the Booth Truths series that I've been interviewing Boothies for, currently I believe there's two episodes or maybe three by the time you watch this, uh, they talk about the different groups that they're in professionally and socially, and so you get to see a little bit more about the Booth culture. All right, we've got last question, sort of, is basically advice, advice for what you should do before coming to Booth or before pursuing your MBA. Um, I would say talk to a lot of people. Just network, do coffee chats, uh, and have them connect to other people. Why? Because it was so beneficial for me to learn about the different career paths. I didn't know there were so many roles like PM or PMM even before, um, you know, fresh out of undergrad. You don't really, you're kind of hyper-focused on that one industry and career path that you know. And for me, that was accounting, at the big four firm. And so I was very laser focused in that tech risk consulting, IT audit, financial audit realms, or tax, uh, which I didn't know there were so many other fields out there, like program manager, a product manager, a product marketing manager, you know, like there's, there's nuances to all of these. I reached out to my high school teacher actually, who connected me to someone at Adobe who worked at a, as a PM. And then she then connected me to a bunch of Adobe other employees who worked in different fields like PM, sorry, PMM, treasury, uh, marketing, advertising, sales, like just so many. And I got to learn about the different realms. Little did I know I was gonna end up in Adobe this summer, but it's just talk to different people and because they do have a lot of very valuable insights. And a lot of the times you're gonna find out things that you didn't know that you didn't know. Um, and it might just change the trajectory of your life and your career. So just talk to people. And the worst that could happen is you reach out and they say no, or they even don't respond. That's like the worst thing that could happen, but that's not even bad at all. Like you expect cold emails to not get responses, but oftentimes they might surprise you with a yes. If you, if you have a question, send me an email or drop them in the comments. I'm always happy to answer your questions because I understand, you know, wanting to know more about the school. No, I hope this video was helpful. Uh, more booth content to come, obviously. And uh, I'm kind of excited to bring the channel back to its roots a little bit. I haven't done this sit-down chat in a long time. Um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.